In this video we are going to see how we use a table grid control. It is a very interesting control, which is used to show the data present in a sheet on the screen of your app in a tabular format. So I have already created a sheet which we will be using for the video. It has a variety of columns present as you can see. It has a date time column, a text column, there is formatting done, I have file upload column, a link column and so on so forth. Also we have added a prefix and suffix and we have a rich text column here and a JSON column and finally a map column. So what we are going to do is bind this entire data to a single control which will be used to display this data in the app. I have already dragged and dropped this table grid control onto the screen. I have gone ahead in the formula option and specified the sheet that I want to fetch the data from and specified the column that I want to bind. And this is how the formula looks like. It appears to be complex but since we have done it through the formula option it is quite easy. Now if we go to the properties section we have this click event property which helps us define the action to be performed when clicked. So first we will set this to detailed view and see how that looks like by going to the preview. This is how it looks like on a mobile view. Let me open the web view. As you can see this looks like a grid, and all the formatting that we had in our sheet is preserved here in the grid including the map and rich text fields. Now we will see what is the effect of choosing the detailed view as the click event. So when I click on this row, this tray appears and we can see all the data present in that row in a detailed format. I can click open links, see details and even here it has preserved all the formatting. So in this way in a single formula I am able to bind many complex data types. So this is the beauty of this control. Also we have these few things that this control comes with, which we can use to interact with the grid. It shows me the number of rows that I have. I can use this search bar to search specific entries, based on the keywords searched it will show all the entries that have that particular keyword. And we have a filter option that we can use to filter out the data. It predicts the type of each column present in the grid and depending upon the type it shows filtering criterias. If it is a date and time column it will show me filters like today or this week or start and end date and time. If the column is of type multi-select, then it will list out all the options that are being used in that column. This is a single select field and as we can see even here it maintains all the formatting that was applied in the sheet. If it is a number column we have minimum and maximum values. And similarly for the progress since it is a range we have a minimum and maximum value filter. So now if we try to apply a filter here. We will select the operator added option and apply filter. As you can see now there is only one row displayed in the grid. Now if we go back we can see what are the filters we have applied and we have this option to reset the filters as well. This control is a very deep down thought control which can be used in a lot of use cases. Now let's close this and explore the other properties associated with the control. As you can see we have a display map option here. And when I switch this on, I get another option in which I can select the default view that I want. So I can use this to switch between the map and list view as the default. Let us see how this view looks like. We have this button added which says map view. When I switch over, it plots the nearest location wherever there is concentration and gives me that kind of a row that I can go ahead and see. So this is the kind of row that I can see. The other things work exactly in the same way they worked before. I still have the filter option and the detail view looks the same. And I can perform the map actions like zooming in and out and drag the map. I can switch back to list view using this button. If we change the click event from detail view to a selection, the new click event will select the row when it is clicked. So if I take a text box here, and apply a formula to this control, and I will select the table grid control that we have above. Now I can select the column whose data I want to extract to this control. We will select the client column. Now that we have the formula configured let's preview and see the application of select click event. So we do not have any value in this text control right now. But when I click on a particular row, the value in the client column of that row is populated in the text control. We can see here the client for the first row is shown in the text control below. Now if I select another row, the value in the text control changes to the value in the client column of that row. We have a few more properties that we can configure for this click event. Here we can change the selection type to multi-select, and keep everything else the same. Let's preview again, and you will notice now we have checkboxes in front of each of the rows. I can now select multiple rows and it will show the client for each of those, separated by commas. 
let's explore more properties. Here we have options to set up the number of visible columns and rows. I can set up the number of rows that I want to see and post that it will show a scroll bar inside the control itself. In case of the visible column, it can be used to limit the columns that the user sees in the grid and then they can click a row and see all the details. We will change this to 5 and see how the table grid changes. So now we can only see the first 5 columns. But on selection, everything works exactly as it worked earlier. We can even fetch the data of the columns that are not displayed here in the grid. This is a very thought out and multifunctional control. There are few extra properties here which allow me to switch on or off the search bar or other options as per my app's requirements. We can also change the theme of the control by selecting the color that we want. Now we have this last click event that we will explore, the navigation event. What this does is, when I click on a particular row it navigates to a particular page where I can perform any other related actions. So let me add a new screen. We can select any type of screen but I will choose a pop-up. Now I will add a text control to this screen and apply the same formula as we used earlier. Now we will go back to the previous screen. Make sure that the navigation property here is set to navigate to page and you are done. So this is how you can use the table grid control. I hope this video is helpful. Thank you for watching. For more videos visit our YouTube page.